The users of financial statements expect faithfully represented financial information that reflect the status or condition of the entity and are relevant for decision making. And conventional accounting systems such as a single entry system may not achieve this. In this video, you'll learn about incomplete records and how financial records can be corrected to obtain more robust financial information. Hello and welcome to the Accounting Feed. My name is Philan and I'm your host for this session. Incomplete records can occur under the following circumstances. Number one, where the accounting records are not kept at all. Number two, where some records exist and the information is available to calculate the missing figures. There are four methods that can be adopted to solve this problem depending on the nature of incomplete records. These include accounting equation method, Control Accounts Method Gross Profit Ratios Method Bank and Cash Balances Method Starting with the first one, Accounting Equation Method, this method is best suited where there are no records at all. Even though there exist no financial records, it is still possible to determine the profit or loss figure. This is because of the fact that assets and profits have a positive or direct relationship. Any increase in profit of a business must be represented by more assets. Thus, increase in net assets equal to increase in profits. If we want to determine the value of profit, then all we need to do is to deduct opening from closing net assets. So profit equal to closing net assets minus opening net assets. It must, however, be remembered that some transactions such as drawings during the year may affect the figures, hence we should include them. A more comprehensive formula will be profit equal to closing net assets minus opening net assets plus drawings minus capital introduced. This is based on the fact that the closing net assets or closing capital at the end of the year is equivalent to the opening net assets plus whatever capital was introduced during the year plus any profit made minus any drawings. Take note of the fact that net assets equal to capital. If we have balances for the total assets at the beginning and at the end of the year, we can calculate the net assets or capital at the start of the year and at the end of the year as follows. Opening capital or net assets equal to opening assets minus opening liabilities. Closing capital or net assets equal to closing assets minus closing liabilities. The second method is control accounts. In this method, we determine the values of credit sales and credit purchases by utilizing receivables and payables control accounts respectively. The assumption is that we have opening and closing balances as well as cash received or paid during the year. And given all these, credit sales and credit purchases will basically be the balancing figure in the accounts. So as you can see in my account, receivables control account to start with, I have the balance put down and the balance carried down. I also have cash received during the year. So all you need to do to get the credit sales figure is to simply take the totals on the credit side minus the total on the debit side and there you go. The same case applies to payables control account. As you can see, I also have the balance put down and the balance carried down. But I also have the cash paid during the year. So if I add the debit side and I deduct the credit side, what I end up with is the credit purchases. The third method to use is gross profit ratios. Gross profit ratios can be used to establish missing figures for sales, purchases, and closing inventory. Remember, gross profit is the difference between sales and cost of sales. This is what we refer to as trading account. Cost of sales can be computed by taking opening inventory, adding purchases, and deducting closing inventory. One of these variables can be calculated others remaining constant if a standard gross profit margin or markup is known. Take note of the following formula. Gross profit margin equal to gross profit divided by sales. So margin in simple terms is gross profit expressed as a percentage of sales. Gross profit markup is equal to gross profit over cost of sales. So we can say that markup is gross profit expressed as a percentage of cost of sales. To apply this method, 
Let's suppose that closing inventory and its records were destroyed by fire. To determine the correct estimate of closing inventory, we'll need to first recognize that these items affect the cost of sales. From the formula above, we can note that gross profit markup is applicable. If margin is given, you'll have to convert it to markup first. Let's look at a typical example of this. We have a hypothetical company here called ABC Enterprises. So ABC Enterprises trading account for the year 31st of December 2020 was as follows. Sales 200,000, cost of sales 160,000 and gross profit is 40,000. We are further told that the gross profit ratios of ABC are expected to remain constant for the foreseeable future. In 2021, the entity's warehouse caught fire and some of the inventory and stock records were destroyed. Existing records indicate the following. Sales, 300,000. Opening inventory, 100,000. Purchases, 200,000. Closing inventory, 50,000. And that gives us cost of sales of 250,000. So gross profit is 50,000. The question therefore is, what was the correct value of closing inventory? To solve this problem, let's follow the following steps. First, given that the sales figure is correct, calculate the applicable margin. In this case, gross profit margin is 40,000 divided by 200,000, which gives us 20%. Secondly, compute the correct gross profit. Since the gross profit margin is 20%, gross profit equal to 20% of 300,000, and that gives us 60,000. Determine the correct cost of sales. Cost of sales can be determined as the difference between the sales revenue and the gross profit. In this problem, cost of sales will be 240,000, which is 300,000 sales and gross profit of 60,000. From here, we can compute the correct closing inventory given that opening inventory and purchases are correct. This means that the goods available for sale is 300,000. That is, opening inventory of 100,000 plus purchases of 200,000. To get the cost of sales figure of 240,000, we'll need to deduct 60,000 as closing inventory. The closing inventory in the records, however, is 50,000. We can therefore say that inventory that was damaged is 10,000, which is the difference between the correct amount of closing inventory, 60,000, and 50,000, which is in our records. The last method that we can use is cash or bank balances. If we know the details of cash receipts and payments plus details of opening and closing cash balances, but with one figure missing, say cash sales, we can open a cash or bank general ledger to determine the cash sales as the balancing figure. This method is mainly used in situations whereby most of our transactions are cash based. So as you can see in my cash account, I have the balance brought down and the balance carried down. I also have the amounts that were deposited during the period on the credit side. Therefore, if I want to determine the cash sales, all I need to do is to add up the figures on the credit side and deduct the opening balance which is on the debit side. The difference represents the cash sales during the period. This marks the end of our brief session on incomplete records. For more of accounting topics, please subscribe to this channel, The Accounting Feed. Like, share, and please make sure you comment also down below in case you have any questions. And I can assure you that all the questions will be answered. Until the next one, I wish you all the very best. See you soon. Cheers.